you're hungry, I know you're upset. Hi, I'm Joe Riccio, and welcome to Fukoma, my 70s kitchen, where hopefully the food is better than the cabinetry, although you'll see the craftsmanship here, it's one of a kind. It's very unique, it's wonderful, we enjoy it. Uh, today I'm gonna to be making Mapo Tofu, which is a, a Chinese dish uh, from the Sichuan uh, province. Basically it translates loosely to the pockmarked grandmother. Uh, I don't need to really tell the story behind that, but there's a lot of ways to spell it. There's a lot of ways to make it. Um, as I go, I will explain every single controversial thing that I do, like the kind of things that I'm like, okay, I'm being proactive about somebody commenting how much they hate me because I did this. Uh, I've been doing this dish for a long time, making this dish for a long time, and this is the way I like it. Uh, I've kind of, you know, tried a lot of different things, found a certain way. Uh, we're also gonna make rice that will make people equally upset. We're doing a coconut saffron rice, a little bit of a mango powder. So uh, mapo tofu is a really spicy, pungent, like it's a strong, strong dish. There's a lot of really strong flavors in it. It's got the, the chili heat, it's got the numbing spices from the Szechuan peppercorn, which we've uh, freshly toasted and, and ground and sifted. So I like the idea of a, uh, a sweeter dish on the side with the rice. Obviously in China, nobody's serving you coconut rice with this. And I know that, you don't have to tell me that. I understand that. I like it though, and I think you'll like it too. So I think the first thing we're gonna do is get the rice started with our biodynamic ghee butter from New Zealand here, which is in the summer, gets nice and liquidy. We're gonna to toast the rice in this essentially. The best part of the show is that we're not actually filming my uh, the oven that's in my apartment uh, because it's a piece of shit, but I'm still kind of getting used to these burners here, but I enjoy them, uh, I enjoy them immensely. I think I might just go with this from now on, you know? You know what's funny is I've never lived in an apartment that has a gas stove. I've always been stuck with electric. I talk about as much as I'd like a Viking range, I kind of have this weird comfort level with electric uh, electric stoves. And that's what I kind of want to imply today, or in the show in general, is that, you know, I feel like a lot of people are cooking out of their apartment and they don't have the luxury of a really nice stove. And some people like myself will probably burn the shit out of food with uh, an actual flame rather than an electric coil. I see our ghee is melting here. So we're gonna do the rice first, uh, cause the rice basically, this, is a, this dish comes together really quickly. The rice is gonna take about 20, you know, 23 minutes to cook. And while that's cooking, we can pretty much do the entire mapo tofu, as long as you've properly done your mise en place. Uh, with a stir fry, that's the whole thing. I could sit here and show you how to prep everything and you could, you know, comment on how terrible my knife skills are but I'd rather show you an organized mise en place because you want things to go in in a sequence and you want them to happen when you need them. Otherwise, things get burned and things go wrong. So, so here we have uh, uh, two cups of jasmine rice, which have been uh, rinsed thoroughly. You always want to wash your rice. I'm not gonna tell you that I always do it if I'm cooking for myself, just because <laughs> Honestly, it's not like it makes things bad. However, it's gonna be much better if you do. You're gonna rinse a lot of the starch off the rice uh, and it's gonna just have an, a, a better texture to it in general. Rice, it never fails. I don't care if you're making this. I don't care if you're making you know, pilaf for the Sultan of Dubai. Do they have a Sultan? I don't know what their government system is. Or you know, you're making a Near East rice pilaf. Anytime you toast your rice in butter or oil, it's gonna taste better. Zatarans. Near East, I don't care. rice -a -roni. I can't remember actually if I've ever had rice -a -roni. Yeah, I, I remember more pasta roni than, than rice -a -roni, which I don't know if that's a San Francisco treat. It was more the Yarmouth, Maine treat at the time. So we're gonna put our rice in to our ghee. And we're gonna work this around. Like you wanna be nervous that you're gonna burn the rice because it's sticking to the bottom of the, the pan. That's what Gordon Ramsay would say. This rice is beautiful, beautiful. Ghee, golden rice, saturated, beautiful. Everyone loves it, innit? We're making saffron rice, aren't we? 
Uh, now, what I would have done in some cases is I'm gonna put some chicken stock into this. I would have made a saffron broth. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna add chicken stock and then I'm gonna add saffron. So now that the rice is, is coated with the ghee and the butter, we're gonna add our liquid. So we're gonna add about three and a half cups of chicken stock. And we're gonna add a cup of coconut milk. Season a little bit, black pepper. Uh, we're gonna put some saffron in. I have just this much left in my tin here. And then this is kind of fun. So this is from Scordo. Actually, a lot of my spices, that I actually, almost all the spices I buy are from Scordo. It's a local uh, main owned spice company. Uh, this is Amchor. So this is basically uh, ground mango powder. So I just put a little bit of this in to kind of like give it a kind of a, a little bit of a fruity. It's, it's fruity and it's like slightly sour. It's really delicious. And then we're gonna, of course, hit it with some salty salt. What's interesting about these uh, sort of um, countertop burners that I didn't realize is that when you have a copper pot, uh, they don't conduct heat as well. Now, I thought this was just a shitty like Charlie Palmer special from Home Goods, but apparently there is a copper bottom to it. So that was getting frustrating. Uh, so what we would do is kind of like go to the shitty electric burner over there, bring it up to a boil, and now it's uh, we turn it down, letting it roll for like 20 minutes over here on high, which is the equivalent of low over there. So that's how we're gonna roll. But the good thing is, it's time to make the mapo tofu. So we have our wok heating up. Now carbon steel, on the other hand, heats plenty fine. The <laughs> level of frustration with the amount of heat in the pan, I didn't really know, I mean, I'm not a scientist, I don't know. How am I supposed to know that this burner, you know, the, I guess the coil burner is the best. So don't buy a ceramic burner and don't buy one of these, just stick with your shitty, home electric coil burner stove because Lisa can cook the bottom, a pan that's apparently got a copper bottom to it and everything's fine. Anyway, we're gonna start with the Mapo Tofu. So one thing about Mapo Tofu that's interesting is that most people, or I think a lot of people make it with pork. I'm not really sure what's, what's prevalent uh, in China. I used to make it with pork probably for 10 years. And then I one day had some actually really good beef, ground beef kicking around and decided to use that instead. And I liked it a lot more. I don't know why. I just think the, the flavors are so intense that I think the beef holds up even better than the pork does. So I use beef. You may use pork. Honestly, if you're a vegetarian, I've actually made this one time with diced mushroom with the tofu. And it was actually, it wasn't as, as good, but it was perfectly passable. It was totally fine. So we're gonna start by heating our wok here up until it's starting to smoke a little bit. We're gonna add some roasted peanut oil that and then we're going to put in our ground beef yep. break that up with a whisk which is a nice tool for this look at that so we're gonna stir fry our ground beef Actually, a newer wok. It's funny because when you spend 12 years seasoning a wok and then work with a new one, it's always a very foreign feeling. It's like it's exciting, but it's weird. Anyway, so we have our ground beef going in here, about a pound of it. Uh, I go with uh, anything. Um, Use around 80% fat. You don't want to go too lean, obviously, because as with anything, it tastes good. The fat makes it taste good. The metal implement's important with a wok because it's actually it's creating little divots that basically the wok is essentially like drinking up fat and oil, and that's what a seasoned wok is. It kind of creates its own nonstick surface. There's a million ways people recommend to season a wok. I like to burn the shit out of a bunch of scallions and onions and a lot of peanut oil in it after I wash it, of course. That's the, that's the method I use. So that beef is starting to kinda, it's turning brown now. So now what I did is I'm using a Chinese fermented black beans, but what I've done is I've actually gone and pulsed and pureed them with ginger and garlic. So the fermented black beans add a really nice kind of deep, almost like raisiny chili flavor to things. It's a very distinct flavor. If you ever had black bean sauce at a Chinese restaurant, that's where it comes from. They usually come in a package like this. 
And you want to make sure that they're the real deal. They don't just say Chinese black beans, that they're actually from the right province. Uh, and then you want to rinse them. They usually have a little bit of ginger in them. So you rinse them up, and I put them in, I buzz them up with the garlic and the ginger, which is going in right now. Again, this is a, a fast process to stir fry. You don't want to burn things. We're going to get to a point where we add, you know, the liquid or things that create liquid, and everything is fine. Now, the next most crucial element in this dish is actually, it's a pigeon doboujang, so it's a fermented chili paste. Now, again, it's a Szechuan thing, usually made from broad beans. And a lot of times the beans are whole, so I actually need to actually give those a, a bit of a pulse, sort of a puree as well, just to kind of give it a better texture. You don't really want the whole bean texture. That's why I puree the black beans. I didn't always used to do that. But I like the way, I like the end result better with the paste. Uh, this is the, the uh, doboujang. It's not very visually appealing, but I promise you, it is delicious. So now this goes in with the beef and we stir fry it for a little bit. Now, this is mapo tofu. So of course, an important element of this dish is tofu. Uh, in Camden, Maine, there's a producer called Hiwa Tofu. It's the best, I think. It tastes the best. It's the tofu that I use if people are like, I hate tofu. I don't know why you'd eat tofu. It tastes like nothing. They try the Hiwa brand and it changes their whole life. And they're never allowed to say they hate tofu again. Now, the Chinese method of sort of preparing a tofu is I cubed it up. Uh, I dropped it in a pot of boiling water for five minutes and I turned the heat off. Well, I, I turned it off after I dropped it into the boiling water. So I let it sit for five minutes and then I let it kind of hang out and dry in a strainer. And that gives it a nice sort of creamy consistency. So we're gonna add this now, the cubed tofu. Work it all around, just keep working it. Like I said, the beef is nice and fatty. I got oil in there. The fermented beans have oil. The tofu is gonna release some liquid. So now you can kind of chill out a little bit. You don't have to worry quite so much about burning stuff. Now, the sauce for mapo tofu that I use, again, I've seen this dish made with everything from beef to pork. Uh, Anthony Bourdain, I think, published a recipe we made it with tripe, which I love tripe. I don't really think I'd want tripe in this dish. But so I'm sure the components of the sauce are controversial, but I use Shaoxing wine. With Shaoxing wine, it's important to find one that is unsalted, if you can. It's not easy sometimes, but basically it's the difference between having a cooking wine like Taylor, like shitbag, like Taylor Sherry, uh, with things that have like added salt to them and they taste like garbage, to actually having a wine you could take a sip of and it wouldn't be terrible. Good Shaoxing wine makes all the difference. If you can find this Pagoda brand, blue right here, aged three years, highly recommend, it's hard to find. And then I use uh, some black vinegar. I use age, age six years. Uh, I use sesame oil and then soy sauce. I like the double fermented soy sauce because I feel like a lot of times, I mean, with Chinese recipes, obviously there's light soy, there's dark soy, there's black soy. I think the double fermented soy a lot of times, especially with a dish like this that's not super delicate, can really cover all your bases uh, at once, you know? So I add the double fermented soy sauce to this, uh, a little bit of uh, some, some ground white pepper. Uh, I use jaggery instead of white sugar. Jaggery is, uh, uh, I get it at the Indian market. It comes in basically in cubes, the brown sugar. I think that the, the flavor is a little deeper than just using, you know, regular white sugar. Uh, then some salts and the secret <laughs> and kind of secret weapon in this is, uh, is ketchup. It's vinegary, it's sweet, it's tomatoey. So I put a little bit of ketchup in it just to kind of round it out. And I think it's delicious personally. So as you can see here, we want to stir it. So there's cornstarch in this, that's the thickener. So you want to bring it to a boil and keep stirring it until it starts thickening up. People in the Shishuan province, they like their food to, they like it to hurt. They like it to leave an impression. So this, the fermented uh, chili paste is really spicy. Uh, and then what I'm gonna add here in the end is the ground Shishuan peppercorn. So 
This, you want to add in the end, not in the beginning. If you add it in the beginning, it's going to get cooked out. And the whole point of this is to give it sort of like a numbing, tingly, it almost has a citrusy flavor, but it's more the sensation that it uh, imparts to the dish. And again, I've used Scordo brand spices. And now we're going to add a bunch of uh, fun chopped scallions. Look at that. You know, in most Chinese dishes, there's really no such thing as too many scallions. And this is no exception. Look at that. Now we're going to add our Szechuan peppercorn. Shit, yeah, that's what I got to say. You want a taste for salt. It usually doesn't need salt. These ingredients are like so friggin' salty. Especially like the dobujang, the, 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 the fermented chili bean paste. But again, if you're a salt junkie, and you know what, so we've added white pepper already. I'm gonna add a little more because I love white pepper. I always have to keep two grinders in the kitchen, one for white pepper, one for black pepper. Always Peugeot, always Peugeot. Always be closing, always be closing. And uh, you know what, I'm gonna preemptively add some salt because I need to get that blood pressure working a little bit. You know, I'm feeling a little, uh, feeling a little low here. With me, everything needs salt, but look at me. I mean, you're probably an attractive, heart smart, fit. You know, you probably just got off your Peloton bike and you're like, I'd like some Mapo tofu right now. And I'm told those things are delightful. I don't own one, as you can see. And I love salt, as you can see. That's why I'm so bloated. That and the, you know, that and the, the wine, as they tell me. Anyway, the Mapo tofu is technically done. So now we just wait for the rice to catch up, if it ever does. Oh, it got pushed off the burner when I was being aggressive with the wok. So it'll probably be like three hours. The rice will be done and we'll be ready to eat, but I'm looking forward to it. Our rice is done, as you can see here. Now this rice, just so you know, as it's cooking, you know, that coconut milk and all this, it seems like there's a lot of liquid in there, but you know, give it the 20, 21 minutes on low after you bring it up to a boil and then give it a stir. You'll find that the liquid really integrates quickly, uh, the coconut milk into the rice, if it doesn't, just let it sit, you know, kill the heat, let it sit for like 20 minutes after giving it a nice fluff. But this is how you want it. I love this rice. This is why I don't care if we'll have a problem with non-traditional rice because that's delicious. Saffron, coconut, mango. We're gonna play it up now. It's a little bit, a little bit of that guy. A little dab will do ya. You don't need a ton. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty filling, this whole deal. We have our ladle from the, uh, Hilltop Spoonworks in Poland, Maine. Cherry wood. Just gonna get that. Look at that, huh? Right on top of that guy there. Just like so. My gilded tasting spoon. I feel like gold flatware is making a comeback. Don't you? Also, charger plates. I like charger plates. I like my goddamn charger plate. Anyway, let's see how this goes. Oof. Yeah. This is mm. the sweet rice makes a difference here with the sweet rice the creamy the sweet the aromatic they go perfectly with all these really aggressive flavors especially the Szechuan peppercorn with like the numbing spice to it it's absolutely delicious i love it if you like what you see today we're going to be making these at least twice a month uh maybe more and if you want to get it on the live stream and in a year get the uh official Fukoma My 70s Kitchen Cookbook. Uh, that's our $10 level on our Patreon program, which you'll see the link to here. $10 a month gets you that and everything I'm about to mention. Uh, we also have the next tier, which is $5 a month, where you get the videos and you get access to the videos and you get a recipe, a handsome recipe, a handsome PDF with a photo and a recipe that's, uh, you know, so you can make your own little scrapbook, which will be fun. And then we also have our dollar tier, which is just, you know, Eternal gratitude from us. We really appreciate it. Uh, every little bit helps. Go on our wall of fame. You're amazing. It's great. But we're looking forward to making more of these, or we're looking forward to you seeing them. So hopefully you've enjoyed today. I'm Joe Riccio. This is Fukoma, my 70s kitchen. <laughs>